At the proud city hall, the Lord Mayor, Alderman Sean Casey, TD, waited to greet and honor Cork's distinguished guest. Council, 
Mr. Aiken. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored by uh, this generous gift and also uh, once again uh, reminded that the Irish uh, have not lost their ability to speak. That was a beautiful welcome. I bring you today a reading from the people of Galway, uh, New York, Dublin, New Hampshire, the people of Kalani, West Virginia, Kilkenny, Minnesota, the people of Limerick, Maine, and the people of Shamrock, Texas. All those... <laughs> most countries uh, send out oil, or iron, steel, or gold, or some other... Crop, but Ireland has had only one export, and that's been people. They've gone all over the United States, and the United States has been generous to them. And I think it's not uh, unfair to say that they've been generous themselves and with their sons and daughters to the United States. What uh, pleases me most about uh, coming here is not only uh, this connection, which all of us in America feel with Ireland, even though time and generations may have separated us from this island, but also because uh, I find here in Ireland those qualities which I associate with the best not only of my own country, but of all that we're trying to do and all that we're trying to be. The world is a small place today, and it is, it seems to me, important that we uh, recognize the kinship which exists between all three people. We are uh, in a most uh, climactic period, in the most difficult and dangerous struggle in the history of the world, in the most difficult and dangerous uh, weapons which have ever been devised, which could annihilate uh, the human race in a few hours. So I think it is uh, important that those of us who happen to be uh, Irish descent come to Ireland, recognize an even stronger bond which exists between uh, Ireland and the United States, between Europe and the United States, between Latin America and the United States, between people of Africa, people of Asia, between all people who wish to be free. That is the most important association, the most important kinship. And I come to this island which has been identified with that effort for a thousand years, which was the first country in the 20th century to lead what is the most powerful tide of the 20th century, the desire for national independence, the desire to be free, and I come here in 1963 and find that strong tide still beat, still runs, and I drive uh, from uh, where we arrived to here and am uh, greeted by an honor guard on the way down, and nearly half of whom wear the blue ribbon which indicates service in the Congo. So Ireland is still old Ireland, but it's found a new mission in the 1960s. And that is to lead the free world, to join with other countries of the free world, to do in the 60s what Ireland did in the early part of this century, and indeed has done for the last 800 years. And that is associated intimately with independence and freedom.